Hello, welcome back to On Pop Culture, and welcome to the first episode of Throwback Thursdays. In Throwback Thursdays, I pretty much am doing, um, just mo show or shows. Pretty much, uh, albums that I had that, that I always wanted to get into, that I didn't really, like, know about, or artists that I wanted to know more about their beginning, um, albums, or their ones that broke them out completely commercially. And or ones that really that really took their career was a more personal thing for their career. So I am starting us off with the very iconic album by Billy Joel called The Stranger. So this came out in 2000 or 2000, 1977 and it is made. It was pretty much came after the other his his is his fifth album after his fourth album came out. That was uh, turnstiles, turn turnstiles that came out. It pretty much there was an issue going on, pretty much where Columbia Records were looking to drop him after uh, turnstiles wasn't didn't really sell as much. So definitely after like so with all that happened, he was pretty much just scrambling to figure out what to do. And he's like, I need to figure out like I definitely want to stay, and I definitely want I definitely have something in me. So he pretty much decided to take his his band and use them on the record and the uh, he also found a a producer to do it who becomes his his go-to producer for a while from 2000 or from 1977 to 1986 that's a long time um and so they continued they, throughout that time they made all types of magic um his he goes by the name of Philip Mor um Ramon so he and he's he's produced for a lot of people: Celine Dion, Bob Dylan, uh, Paul Simon, uh, Gloria Estefan, um, George Michael. So pretty much, he did a lot of he's he's had his toes in a lot of people's careers. So um, so yeah. So I I'm gonna go through this album and talk about what I like about it and why what, what I took from it and everything by looking up like the meanings of the song says. Did not I did know this before, but I reading more into s these songs, I forget that Billy Joel can just tell you any like he has he has a lot of um he has a lot of messaging in his songs. So I'm very excited to get into to kind of share this what I found to you guys. So let's get started. So obviously we're starting with side one. So there's a side one, there's a side two. So side one starts off with um with uh, moving out. Uh, Anthony's song. So I have heard the song before. It's I really do like it. I s literally thanks to Family Guy and my partner, who's a huge Billy Joel fan. I pretty much got a taste of Billy Joel in different pieces, including on radio. So hearing this song, I really really like. And it's pretty much talking about the questioning the amount of effort it takes to get your piece of American the American dream, and is it worth it? Is it is it worth it to chase after that direction, hashtag communism, or communism, hashtag capitalism, or do you have to go, is it better to find where your happiness belongs? Um, and I think that's what he's saying, and he has uh, two people inside this that they're ta that he's talking about. He's talking about Anthony, who is who works at this grocery store. He also talks about Sergeant o o um, O'Leary, who is who's a police at, in the daytime and bartender at night? It is pretty much both of them are just like looking to do something and looking to looking to elevate themselves into the world of, into the world of capitalism and realizing and he's Billy is really not saying like you don't is that what you really want to do like if this is does this actually equal happiness you know. Um, side note, excuse the jacket, I don't have anything, I try to do something like close to, um, similar to Billy Joel's kind of look, but this is all I got, so, we gonna, we're gonna deal with this loud jacket and the sounds it's gonna make, so, and my uncomfortability as I'm in California, so it's a little hot. So, um, so anyway, so yeah, so going to number two, which is The Stranger, the title car, or the title song, so... This one pretty much is talking about the idea, uh, well, one interview that I saw is that he, that Billy Joel pointed out that it could be about a man with schizophrenia. Uh, so, but I took it completely different. I think it's about the idea of not being your full self in a relationship or not 
not acknowledging the full self of the other person in a relationship, their true self. And I feel like that's exactly what he, that's exactly what he's trying to point out. He says in a couple times, he's like, he's like, well, we're all, fall, we all fall in love and we disregard the danger. Pretty much ignore the fire, ignore the, like, um, not the fire signs. Ignore the, um, ah, I'm, it's just not coming out. Um, ignoring the, uh, red flags. Red flags. Ignoring the red flags and just going over it, just going for it. Um, another thing he says is, why are you always so, why are you so surprised that you never saw the stranger? Do you ever let your lover see the stranger inside yourself? Pretty much saying there's an also, an, it's also, an, there's always a hidden self inside everybody and everybody has a mask and they only show you things that they want you to see. And I think that he's pretty much pointing that out. Um, and also that seep and inks into relationships where you just, where you apply, they both bring that type of thing. They want to be everything you want them to be, or they don't want to show you everything. And so you, till they have no, until they get to the point where they do, you're like, oh, this is a complete different person. Um, love the song, love the sound. Everything's about it. It's amazing. Just the way you are is the next song. And I, I sat back and I was like, I don't think I've heard the song. It'll be a good song I haven't heard, but I actually have heard the song. Um, this one actually won in 1978. It won Record of the Year and Song of the Year. So that's kind of amazing. And this song is about, is about his wife. To, just saying, pretty much, don't change anything about you. I like you. Just keep you how you are. Don't You don't need to impress me or do anything for me or for me or for like to change up to excite the relationship. It's just, it's per you are perfect the way you are. Um, and so he's talking about his wife in this, his actual wife, and it's beautiful, unconditional love of a song, and I love the saxophone little solo that goes, that came into it, it was so nice, perfect, and pretty much, and this idea of this is kind of ironic, because he sings about this, and apparently he's, after the divorce of him, and uh, with him and his wife in 1982, they had a nine-year relationship, or marriage, um, he stopped singing it until the early 2000s, and so, it was, so, I think, obviously, for for obvious reasons, so, it's kind of interesting in that direction. You see, and, you'll, and I felt like I start feeling more <laughs> for what's going on, like, oh, oh, as the songs go on. Um, scene, scene from an Italian restaurant is another one. It's a three songs and one. So, pretty much, the song is talking about a couple, Brenda and Eddie, and I felt like, I know in a background, 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 this is about, or uh, he, ins this was inspired by the meet, the meet up with um, Phil Ramone, and pretty much to talk about their, like, how they want to do stuff, how they want to make this album and its production and stuff like that, but he kind of made it, he started off that way, like, oh, why, uh, red wine, white wine, stuff like that, and then moved on into talking about Brenda and Eddie, and pretty much their sweetheart, how, or high school sweethearts that love each other and then they decide to get married even though their friends are like, you guys are not fit for marriage or fit for, yeah, fit for marriage. And they're like, whatever, we don't care. You guys can just go to hell or something. They get married and then money come, money issues starts to be a problem and then divorce happens. And it's just like, and I felt like the pieces of the red wine um, verse and the... I felt like there was a night in the reminiscing part of the second verse. I felt like there was a nice direction of talking of them meeting up again to see if there's a bit of a magic there again, or if, if they just kind of catching up and it's just like, yeah, there's no magic. There's no more magic. We can just, we caught up and we went on our way, you know? Um, Vienna is the, is the start of, uh, side two. Love Vienna. It's my favorite song off the album officially. It speaks to me so much. I love everything, the messaging in it is so amazing. Um, this is actually Billy, Billy Joel's favorite song too, so <laughs> we have something in common. Um, this is, um, this song is pretty nice. I love all the lyrics. Like, one of the parts he's like, you got passion, you got pride, don't you, but don't you know that only fools are satisfied. Life is not meant to be satisfying. It's not meant to be complete, every, you get everything you want. You're not always going to get everything you want. Um, I think that's what he's saying. Is like, if you think you're striving for perfection, you'll never find it. You're striving for satisfa satisfaction, you'll never try, you'll never find it. Um, satisfaction, you'll never find it, you know. 
So, or fully find it. Um, and also, side of this is also about uh, Vienna, where his dad lives, and pretty much he saw this old lady sweeping the floor, or uh, sweeping the streets, and he's like, why is that old lady doing that? Why don't he have, why don't she has like another younger person do it for her? And his dad's like, well, in this, in this country, or in this city, we, we take care of our older, our older people. Like, we take care of them. We actually do stuff. We actually, we don't just throw them into a, um, retirement home and just ditch them. We actually, they still are part of the community. They still hold, they still have a part to play in this, you know? And so I think that's what he's pretty much talking about is just like, well, mixture between slow down. You can always, like, life will, life, let, li like, let life take the wheel and kind of trust that you will make it to there. But be, so be super ambitious, looking for that satisfaction, going for that goal. You're just going to wear yourself out because life has its own plan, you know? Um, the only good, the only good die, only the good die young is the next song, which is my other favorite song. I love the whole idea. It was inspired by his, by Billy Joel's high school crush called Virginia. We're talking directly to her. Um, and it's pretty much talking about how she's a Catholic and she's has this, all these religions, she's surrounded by religion and she has all this going on, but he's like, hey, like, you, and he wants to, he wants to get with her, but she's like, no, sorry, I can't do that. And she's, he's like, why? He's like, we, you are going to, you're going to choose to be in this world where you don't get to explore your life or experience things or have some type of mileage for your own sake. Like you rather just fall into, fall in line into this religion. It's never going to lead you. It's not going to lead you to your own path, you know? Um, so I think that's what he's trying to say in this. Um, he says, I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints. They seem to have more fun. Um, your, um, your Catholic girl, you Catholic girls start much too late. I literally had a friend that was in a Christian, um, high school that, like, later, like, everything was, she said she's, like, never did anything, but then, like, afterwards, like, we went out to the clubs, we did all these things, and she was way more wild than even I was. And so it makes you realize, like, yeah, yeah, you, there's so much pent up, like, freedom, like, pe like, angst and anxiousness and just wanting to get out and be your own thing. And I think that it's just, it's, I feel like that's a whole, whole thing about the religious thing that we need to change eventually. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, always a woman to me, or, or, or always a woman to me, always a woman is another song that's about his, her, his, uh, wife and he, about how he loves her quirks and her flaws even though I feel like there's some parts where she's her flaws do get into question. I was like, that might be a red flag for your divorce. But we'll bypass that, you know. Um, going into Get It Right uh, Get It Right the First Time is one of my other favorite songs off the album. It's pretty much talking about he wants to oppress this woman, but he's scared that if he if he fucks up, he's gonna not get a second chance. So he's like, he's really gonna try to balance between like just do it. Well, what if you fuck up? Just just do it, you know. And I love it. Um and then finally, Everybody Has a Dream, which is a perfect ending to an album. It just sounds and it sounds like a conclusion. The whole thing sounds like a conclusion. And it kills me because I feel like when I heard it, immediately I just popped in a couple of other people, like artists that I know that their albums just didn't end that way. It didn't feel like concluded. So it was just like, okay, I guess we just have a random song at the end. You know, like, it didn't seem like a full-on concluded album. And this one does. It has great choir kind of sound to it. It's talking about his rationalizing, or rationalizing the, his dreams and his fantasies and what he wants to do. But what he really wants to do is just have a happy life with his wife and just have a comfortable life where we can, where they can live in harmony and just have a great time, you know? Um, he says, and all, of, and this is my dream, my own, just to be at home and be all alone with you. Love it. I think it's so cute. I think it's a perfect ending. There's even and it, the, in the end, it circles around to a little bit of the end, or it ends with um, the instrumental of um, The Stranger on top of that with the additional whistling, which I love his whistling. It's so clean. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all I got from this album. It's, I really, really liked it. I think that it's just, it's, it's so great. I'm so glad. I'm so blessed to have an opportunity to actually see this, like, to actually experience these albums like this, especially, like, thank you, Spotify. 
Um, leave a comment below. Tell me what your favorite song is off The Stranger. What was your favorite song? And or what was your, or if you have a history with this album, did it change your life? Did it do something to you personally? Please, please let me know. I'd love to hear your stories. Um, or if you've seen him live with this song, with this album, like, please let me know. I would love to hear your story. With that all said, that's pretty much it. I think I'm not going to give, oh, uh, maybe I will. I give this one pretty much, um, I give this one a, I give this one a 8, or no, no, I give this one a 10 out of 10, or, yeah, 10 out of 10. I really liked it. It was, every song was pretty perfect. I loved everything and just wrapped around so perfectly. Um, that's pretty much it. Leave a comment below, tell me what you thought. Uh, once again, your stories or anything that you have associated with this, that'd be great to hear. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get more of my videos. And I'll see you all in the next video.